Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today um, on this rainy afternoon. Uh, we will be discussing um, a topic of BAME, BAMENESS, BAME of our lives, truth and stereotypes in Asian writing. My name is Reshma Ruya. I'm a poet and a writer and also the co-founder of uh, The Whole Kahani, which is the writers um, collective of British South Asian writers. Kahani is a Hindi word. It means the whole story. And as such, it really very much reflects the spirit of this festival, which is all about um, listening to a variety of voices. So joining me today, are my fellow uh, co-writers from the whole Kahani, Mona Dash, Nadia Kabir Bab, and Shivani Lal. And we will be grappling with the idea of what BAM means to us writers from a South Asian community. Is it a label that uh, chokes a creative imagination? Or is it a signpost directing potential readers and publishers to what we uniquely have to offer? So do put your thoughts and questions in the chat room where you'll also find a link to our website and our two anthologies. Um, maybe borrow your country and love across a broken map. So these are two, and we've got a third anthology on the way as well. So uh, briefly, just a brief, uh, quick bio about my, my, the, my esteemed panelists today. Mona Dash is an award-winning writer and poet. A memoir, the author, um, the, A Roll of the Dice, won the 2020 Island Book Award. Her short story collection, Let Us Look Elsewhere, is coming out next month, uh, published by Dailia Books. She has a degree in engineering and an MBA and a master's in creative writing, and she works in the global tech company. Nadia Kabir Bab is a British Bangladeshi writer and journalist. Her debut collection of short stories, Truth or Dare, was launched at the Dhaka Literary Festival in 2017. Her stories have also been published in various international literary journals and anthologies. She has worked in the health and development sector in both UK and Bangladesh, and she's currently working on her first novel. And last but not the least, um, there's Shivani Lal. She writes stories and flash fiction. She was a finalist for the 2019 Hamlin Garland Award and won the 2019 City University Writing Competition. Her stories have been long listed uh, in several competitions, including the Bristol Prize, the Fish Story Prize, and the Cambridge Short Story Prize. And she's currently working on a short story collection. So um, before we sort of um, dive into this topic of what BAME means to us as South Asian writers, I thought let's begin by deconstructing the term BAME. I'm sure all of you, uh, I'm sure the audience would be familiar with what uh, uh, BAME stands for, British Asian Minority Ethnics. I mean, it's quite a mouthful. And uh, the term is called an umbrella term, and it originally came about as a response to the um, anti-racist movements of the 70s when, we all, uh, when you know, there was a whole feeling that, you know, all of us, all non-white uh, minorities were lumped together and thrown under this, you know, category of black. So it was meant to be nuanced, but I feel that it perpetuated an oversimplification of uh, what was a complex reality. If you look at the A, the Asian bit of, uh, of this uh, acronym, Asia is a vast continent. Uh, it's got different races, languages, culture, history. And uh, so what does the term Asian specifically refer to? You know, So reducing an entire continent of, I don't know, 4.6 billion people to an acronym may Maybe it's right for statistics and for the census, but um, I think it does a huge disservice to our complex cultural and creative makeup. So I think uh, the first question that I think we'll all try to answer uh, in our own way is, um, are we comfortable with the term BAME? And uh, personally, I think as a writer, I find it a problematic term. I've had a multilingual, multicultural upbringing. And uh, this upbringing has, enriched and informed my writing. And I've been, uh, you know, I'm sure the others will agree. I'll, I've been like a magpie cherry picking different aspects to build up my identity. And the other problem, of course, with this term is uh, the whole concept of othering, you know. I feel that what this does is that uh, it puts us in almost like a footnote to the general level of the national conversation. So while we are British, but we're not British enough, you know, we can, we're only entitled to talk about certain issues. 
So it might fulfill certain diversity and inclusion criteria, but uh, maybe it doesn't help in assimilation. So let me begin by asking uh, Mona, I mean, do you feel comfortable with the term BAME as, a, you know, as an individual, you know? What are your thoughts, man? But Yes, so I think, um, um, so yeah, I mean, there's two aspects to it. And the question I know sounds uh, simple, but of course there's uh, multiple layers uh, to that question itself. Mm -hmm. So as a writer, I think you just mentioned that, that the word uh, BAME, it's such a wide spectrum. And in that huge spectrum, it is kind of clubbing all the, you know, the black mm -hmm. Asian ethnic minorities. So you have people like, uh, whether it's Ishiguro or Salman Rushdie, all under the BAME category. Um, so as a writer, I feel that, um, when you're trying to classify so many different kinds of writers or writing into um, one othering, you know, and then you other the whole large spectrum against mainstream writing. Uh, and while you do that, then what happens is there are other problems. For example, publishers do lip service and they want... Um, sorry, I'm just... Am I audible enough? Or? Yeah. Is that fine? Yeah, I think that's better now. We were getting a little bit of feedback, but I think that's that's sorted now. Okay. Yes. Um, so yeah, so just to continue, um, and they should start to do sort of lip service and they want, okay, we'll have one BAME author on a list and, you know, they have a black writer, say, and then the next Asian writer comes along and um, they're like, no, we already have the BAME writer. So I think those kinds of problems happen when you are trying to club such a different wide spectrum under one. And uh, then the um, other problem which happens is that, um, uh, so yeah, so that's one aspect of it. But whether the, if your question is whether uh, there needs to be such a term or there needs to be a special gaze towards fame writers, then I think definitely yes. I mean, definitely there is a requirement that um, there has to be a sort of special empathy or a special gaze because this is underrepresented. Mm -hmm. So on one side, I'm saying as a writer, the clubbing of the whole big spectrum as an other is not mm -hmm. adequate enough. But also I'm saying that there has to be a special gaze because definitely there's an underrepresentation, definitely there's a visibility issue about right. um, Asian and other writers. Right, thank so. you, Mona. So I'll, uh, what about you, Nadia? What are your thoughts about being uh, seen as a being, you know, as a Bangladeshi British person? Quite funny, but these days when I actually hear the term BAME, I'm reminded of uh, the Borg Collective in Star Trek. I don't know if any of you are Trekkies, but um, they, sh they have a shared consciousness. And uh, basically they're uh, a, an alien species or rather a cybernetic organism who go around assimilating other alien species. And it just feels like, you know, for black, Asian and minority ethnic people out there that our tagline should be resistance is futile, you will be assimilated, you know, as if we're part of this kind of greater amorphous umbrella or collective. Having said which, the whole Kahani is a collective, but I promise you we are not like the Borg and we don't share a hive mentality, you know, but I do think that labeling people as BAME especially such a, as you've said, such a diverse group. I mean, and homogenizing them into one category is somewhat reductive. And it really does strip us of our individual identities. And, you know, the beauty of diversity is the individual and, um, I don't know, pers personal experiences or unique perspectives that we bring with us. And I think that, um, you know, by being pigeoned, pigeonholed into conforming to these stereotypes of whether it's race or ethnicity or community, you know, it's, I think it's, it's just unproductive. And it's also quite often white stereotyping. It's sort of what is expected of us and from us. And the thing is that the, whether it's the black community or the Asian community, I mean, we all have such different sort of cultural backgrounds, or as you said, whether it's language or even our sensibilities are different. And uh, I just think it's problematic by lumping us all together. And um, 
The other thing I find is that when we talk about these labels, it implies that whiteness is the standard or the baseline and that we are outside that or we are, as you said, we are other. And um, I, I don't call my, when I talk about myself, I don't actually call myself a BAME writer. I mean, what I really like is just to be called a writer, you know, or a storyteller, because that's what I want to do. I just want to tell stories. And um, so I wonder why a white writer doesn't get labeled as a white writer, but I would get categorized as a BAME writer. You know, so I think, I think to be honest, it is at some point quite pro problematic to be a writer and defined as BAME. Thank you, Nadia. How about you, Shivani? Um, do you have um, great question, uh, Thank you. And I have to confess, I um, I'm probably quite aligned um, with Nadia here without the Star Trek reference, but. <laughs> Um, I have fundamentally always found, you know, these sort of these sort of, you know, being trying to be put into boxes a very difficult concept to, to to live with. Fundamentally, all of us, whether we come from the same country or not, we are all unique in our own way. So, trying to just take people from one country or even one location and shove them into a box, I find problematic. Then to take such a wide spectrum, just expanding from a from a place to then just a country like India. I'm from India, and in my own personal, in my own family, I have my parents come from two completely different parts of the country. They don't even have a shared language or shared cuisine. Um, so I already, you know, so there's already that. Then you put that into a wider spectrum uh, and just label it as BAME. Um, I'm not entirely sure what that actually does, apart from almost making us feel that because we don't conform, we are different. And while I suspect the intentions are good in terms of it wants to, you know, the label was um, sort of, sort of, um, sort of, patched on to make us feel inclusive, actually it makes us feel more different. And I'm not, I, I really struggle to understand why after so many years of globalization, we want to have all these labels that celebrate differences when actually, if anything, the last 50, 30, 20, 30 years has taught us is actually we're more similar um, in many ways. In terms of our personal experiences, we all want to succeed, whatever our definition of success is. We all want to be loved and and and, um, and to give love we all want to have friendships and relationships I don't think any of us has looked at a friend and said oh I like him because he's English or I like him because he's a Bangladeshi or I like him because he's French and I actually don't think if we look back at our formative years as readers because any writer is at at, at assess and any writer is a reader I'm not entirely sure we picked, picked books because the writer was from a certain place. I mean, I certainly picked books because it, it allowed me to travel to different places, some of them being Asian writers, some of them being non-Asian writers, but the whole beauty and the joy of reading is to be able to transport yourself in different places. Um, and I'm not entirely sure that having the BAME label on it um, adds anything to that. So to answer the question, I am, I feel that the label actually makes us celebrate, it sort of points out differences rather than celebrating our, you know, togetherness, our uniqueness, our individuality. It strips us of that. Thank you. Thank you, Shivani. Yes. I think we are all sort of roughly on the same page uh, in terms of, you know, thinking that BAME probably is like a, almost it's out of its usefulness, you know, it probably served a purpose when it began. And um, of course, closely related to what we were talking about is the whole thing about um, bameness. I mean, it's, I hope it doesn't sound like a disease or a condition, but, you know, how does bameness um, influence, uh, you know, our subject matter, our style, our theme of writing? And after all, we are fiction writers. I mean, uh, person, you know, we invent lives. And I, I feel that to put us in a box, as we were saying, is to deprive us almost of the oxygen of uh, imagination. And, um, you know, my own, my writing, you know, features protagonists who come from all ethnicities, ages, genders. I have two novels written from a male point of view. And um, I've got short stories which feature Korean, French, Sudanese, English. So I think when we talk about sort of writing outside the sort of the whole Asian perspective, what's important is maybe to give these different characters and nationalities and um, 
ethnicities the respect they deserve, you know, in terms of uh, avoiding stereotypes and one dimensional caricatures, you know, and this, of course, then, uh, you know, when we talk about variety, I'm not sort of saying that we should deny our Asian-ness also, because after all, that's our cultural capital, right? Uh, uh, you know, inclusivity and representation matters, you know, we want to read books, which reflect our stories, which speak to us uh, about a world that we understand, you know. And what I was interested in finding out from all of you was that, do you sort of censor yourself when you're writing about so, uh, supposedly, you know, what you consider Asian theme? Do you feel that, uh, you know, is it too cliched? Is it exotic? Is writing about mangoes, for instance, is, uh, is it exotic or is it your reality? I know there've been lots of articles written about this whole theme of, you know, should we have a sari clad, uh, you know, lady on the cover of our book? Or do we really have to write about arranged marriages? Uh, so are, are, we conce are we seen as sort of flag bearers of our, uh, you know, ethnicity or ambassadors of our culture? Because that's a big weight for a writer to carry, you know. We're not spokespeople, but, you know, sometimes when people look at us, they say, oh, uh, you know, oh, she's Bangladeshi. Oh, does she, maybe she'll know all about, you know, the uh, politics or whatever, you know, the history of uh, Bangladesh. Or she's Indian. Maybe she'll know about the, you know, the whole, the, why has the COVID, <laughs> you know, struck again in India? So... Uh, you know, I'm interested, you know, so let me begin with you, Nadia, you know, this time. Uh, what do you feel? Do you feel that there's a certain level of sort of self-censorship or freedom? Definitely. I mean, first of all, I think that as a South Asian writer, BME writer, uh, there are certain tropes that I feel that we're expected to write about, you know, whether it's about race or um, post-colonialism or the immigrant story, like you said, it's then about arranged marriages or, you know, you know, saris, you know, women wearing saris and bangles, and you have to throw in a bit of, you know, jasmine tree here or there, you know, um, and I think it is something, I mean, you know, it is something that we all have to face, but I, for myself, I definitely do think that my South Asian-ness, not necessarily my bame you know, influences um, my writing, especially because I consider myself as British Bangladeshi. Uh, I was born in Bangladesh and I've kind of lived there sporadically, but I've lived most of my life in England with a few years in Germany and Ireland. And that obviously has influenced my outlook on life, my you know perceptions on on things, and it shaped my sensibilities. And unlike you, most of my protagonists and main characters are actually South Asian. And I think that not that other you know characters are not from other um, nationalities, but my main characters are. And I think actually that would stem from the fact that growing up, I didn't see very many people like myself rep represented in the books that I read, um, especially in English literature, obviously in Bengali literature, yes, but not in, in English literature. Um, in fact, I remember, I think when I was 12, I wrote my first, started my first novel, uh, and uh, it had a character called Christine, and she had a brother called Charlie. And uh, I think I stopped after the second or third page, but um, I just never thought that I could actually write about a character that was brown. It just didn't occur to me that was a possibility. So I have to say, I'm actually very happy these days that I think children's books are becoming more diverse and you are seeing sort of characters that are not predominantly white. So I think it's good that children will be able to identify with these characters. Um, but like you said, we do suffer from a sense of self-censorship because um, I think as a, uh, sort of on the one hand, over here, we are expected to write about certain, certain aspects of South Asian-ness. But on the other side, I do feel being a South Asian, especially a uh, South Asian female Muslim woman, there are a lot of um, topics that I have to sort of, I do worry about when I write about, let's say taboo topics such as sex or sexuality. And you know, um, it can be frowned upon if you write it. So I think that um, when you've got these sort of, it's like in stereo, you've got these constraints kind of coming at you from both sides. It can be very, um, 
uh, difficult to allow yourself to be creative because you're constantly worrying about, should I write this? Should I write that? And I don't want to be writing about something um, because I should be writing about it. On the other hand, I don't want to not be writing something because I shouldn't be writing about it, you know? So I think what I, you know, what I end up doing is I have to take myself out of my bameness and I just have to write what I, I feel like. I mean, I like you, I've got characters. I've got a, a, a homeless teenager in London. I who no bangles, sorry, he's been these inside. You know, on the other hand, I've written about a Bangladeshi prostitute, which yes, sorry, bangles, bindis, yeah, you name it. I've got it minus the mangoes, you know, <laughs> but right. uh, I think that uh, it is an issue. And I think we need to go beyond this trope that we are living with. And actually there's more to us than, than what we talk about this stereotype. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Nadia. Yeah. Uh, Shivani, are you sort of on the same page in terms of, um, you know, writing about, you know, how do you approach your writing? Yeah. Well, I mean, my writing writer, or just is, as a writer. My writing is completely well. I am a product of my. I am the sum total of my experiences and my adventures. Um, I have spent exactly half my life, as we stand today, exactly half my life in India, the country of my birth, and the other half of my life across five countries in the West, or four countries in the West. Um, England being um, one where I've spent. Uh, you know, most of my time. So for me, it, uh, um, so if, if, the, if, if my writing is the sum total of all my experiences and adventures and everything that I've seen, um, then it's fair to say purely mathematically that BAME contributes or India contributes half and the rest of it is the other half. So to answer your question, um, I write about what I know and what I know is some, some, some of it is due to where I, was, where I grew up. Some of it is due to where I chose to live. Some of it is due to what I choose to read. I, I have stories of, um, I'm, very con I'm very interested in, um, you know, the human condition. I'm very interested in certain topics that can be placed anywhere. I have stories of, um, you know, sort of mm -hmm. children being, um, sort of abducted in Mexico. I have stories uh, based in the, based on the genocide in Rwanda. These were big international sort of stories that I read and I followed and that it influenced me. And I based my characters uh, and, and set them against this backdrop. But equally, uh, I also have an Indian prostitute um, in, a, in, a, in a sari. Um, but I can also say that, and perhaps I sound completely uh, naive here, but I don't, that my prostitute was, or my my character was, uh, is an Indian prostitute. Has nothing has less to do with me being Indian. I've never met an Indian prostitute. Having said that, I haven't met a non-Indian prostitute either. What I'm trying to say is, I just it just so happened that the story I had in mind fit in very well against mm. the backdrop of India and the story yeah. I had in mind about um, you know a, a, a victim of genocide fit in obviously very well in Rwanda. Um, mm. So to answer that question, bameness, well, it, it, I don't know if it's bameness that affects my storytelling. It is my life experiences and my interests that affect my storytelling. Um, with, you know, half of my life in India, yes, that plays some role, but with half of my life out of India, that equally plays a role. So I actually wouldn't even, and this is not to say I'm not proud of my Indian heritage, obviously I, I, I am, but I don't, again, I, I struggle with the, being put into a box. Oh, I'm Indian, so I must write Indian stories. No, I am I am a person of today's very global, very interconnected world. Um, and my stories, my characters reflect that. And as we continue and become, as and the borders of the corona, the borders have become, have literally been erased. Everything is virtual now. And I suspect that in the years to come, my characters will become even more fungible, become even more borderless, because really that's the way I see the world and that's the way uh, I choose to live in the world. Right, thank you, Shivani. Yeah, you're right, actually. I think as sort of, um, you know, diaspora writers, we are in a way global nomads, actually. You know, we do draw upon our roots, but then, you know, the world is, uh, you know, our stage. And it's interesting, you know, I sort of listened into an interview that Jhumpa Lehri gave the other day about, you know, she brought out this new novel in Italian and 
she was saying that how she has sort of moved away from writing about Bengali, you know, uh, first generation um, uh, immigrants in America. And in a way, uh, she's renounced the English language as well. And by, you know, writing creatively in Italian, it's sort of given us this unique third space that, uh, you know, that shows that she is almost like sort of floating above her ethnicity and her cultural rootedness of both her, you know, her homeland and of her adopted homeland, uh, uh, you know, um, a country of her birth, India, and also uh, America, where she sort of grew up. So it's a fascinating topic. And uh, I don't know, Mona, what, do you wish to add, uh, you know, to this uh, in any way? You know, do you feel that you are compelled to write about certain things? It's expected of you as an Indian British writer. Um, yeah, I mean, there's two aspects to the question. Again, there's what um, one wants to write and what, uh, you know, the world expects you to write. So I personally am a writer of, um, I've written a lot of poetry. I have two uh, published collections of poetry. I have a, a novel. I've got a, my memoir was published uh, two years ago. And my short story collection is going to come out um, next month. So there is a variety of writing which I have done. And um, I think the themes have really been sort of changing. I do believe when I was writing probably more when I was in India, when I started off writing um, more of poetry. At that time, I think the issues which were very relevant or very core to me was a lot about feminism, about how, you know, issues affecting women. And then when I moved to the UK, I definitely felt my writing um, change a little bit again with those sort of themes, which of course was a lot tending more to about, about identity and belonging, because that's what the kind of uh, themes which were um, around me. So I don't feel there's any restriction in the themes I do explore. I tend to explore um, characters who are, um, you know, who are sort of facing like any sort of a disconnect or um, are looking for something. And in fact, my short story collection is called Let Us Look Elsewhere, because it is meant to be about a sort of search, whether it's home or it's love or it's um, identity. So it's a variety of themes. However, so the, I don't feel a restriction, even if there might be an expectation that she shouldn't be exploring a certain theme. But, you know, Asians do love, you know, Asians also, I mean, there's also death, there's also grief, there's also um, everything in the nation world. So even if that might be an expectation, I don't listen to that. I mean, I explore all these themes. But my characters, I do also tend to think, as I think Nadia mentioned, I think, I mean, again, I have a multiple nationalities. I have um, one of my short stories. It's about actually an animal skinner in Finland. So it's not something which is very core to me, but the animal skinner does go to travel to India. And there is an exploration there. So what I'm saying is that I tend to have some sort of an Asian character or an Asian protagonist, because my view is if I don't write about people like myself, then who would? You know, it is it is my story. So if I'm writing an Indian um, person, I probably would base make that person an Oriya, um, and because I'm from Odisha, so I think there's hardly any Odisha writing uh, in the international world. There's a lot of Bengali characters, a lot of Punjabis, but there's nobody writing about uh, Odisha. And I feel I'm in that place when I can. So if my character is a woman, I probably would make them an Oriya woman. So I think that's what I to do think. And I mean, we might explore this in a later, but for example, my memoir, it's a story about motherhood. It's a story about medicine and miracles and um, skid and genetics. All these are universal themes. However, at the heart of it, it is an, it's a memoir, so it's a personal story. It's myself, it's an Indian woman who's moved to the UK. So the, the sub layer there is obviously about identity and belonging and everything, but it's about a universal theme of motherhood. Uh, but how that has been accepted, I think, um, uh, yeah, I can explore that in the next question about how the whole, yeah. um, how it was accepted by the of other, course. by the international, by the literary community. Yeah, I think that brings us neatly to this sort of, uh, well, you know, as right, uh, writers, we need readers, right? You know, um, we write in solitude, but uh, we want our work, you know, we want our words to matter to somebody, to, uh, you know, for people to relate to it, for them to have a peep into another way of life or maybe to to read something that reflects their life actually it doesn't just necessarily mean traveling into another world but uh and the uh, who uh, you know it's publishers who make that possible you know they are almost the gatekeepers you know uh, who are standing between the writer and the reader uh, they are the bridge and there was a fascinating uh, study commissioned last year by the by goldsmith college 
and it, it was sort of um, it was about uh, thinking of diversity in publishing and it, they came up with some very interesting um, you know insights and I think the main finding was that publishers by and large by publishers I'm referring uh, to mainly large mainstream publishers you know the big five they have a very sort of narrow sense of their audience um, and uh, I think the idea is that the core reader is a white middle class older woman in fact in the rep report they sort of refer to her disparagingly as a Susan. I mean, I don't know what that means, but uh, she was, uh, you know, the inference was that, um, you know, if uh, uh, this sort of Susan or this white middle-class woman read something which was different, she wouldn't relate to it, you know. And in that sense, BAME authors are seen as a risky investment. And also surprisingly, there was, uh, they found out that uh, they felt that racial and ethnic minorities probably read less than you know the white uh, mainstream, so that they so they'd be less drawn to you know ethnic writers because a they don't read much and they probably prefer to watch TV. So th there was a fear that a that that you know they won't be able to relate to stories by writers from racial and ethnic minorities, and also if our books are published, the inference is that maybe the covers should show certain the sari clad woman sort of looking demurely over her shoulder or a peacock or a fiery sunset with a sort of outline of the thought. So I was just wondering, you know, uh, in fact, ironically, I feel, especially with the whole Kahani, uh, you know, with our experience, it's indie publishers, you know, independent publishers who've been at the forefront who've championed, you know, emerging voices uh, from, you know, BAME voices. And, uh, you know, and uh, both our anthologies have been published by, uh, one, the first one, uh, Love Across the Broken Map was published by Dahlia Books. And uh, the second one, Maybe Borrow Your Country, is published by Linen Press. And also our third anthology, which will be coming out later this year, will be published again by Linen Press. So definitely a big shout out to indie presses, you know, for their passion and for their, you know, for their, you know, actually for the bravery, actually, on taking on a challenge. So I don't know, Mona, I mean, you've been published in, uh, you know, both India and Britain, you know, and um, I don't know, what has your experience been in terms of, uh, you know, when it came to publishing your work? Did you find there were barriers, you know, that we talk about? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, I've actually been published um, uh, in in the UK. It has been, again, what you mentioned, the uh, indie presses like Dahlia Books, which is publishing my, my short story collection next month. And uh, my memoir was published by Linen Press, as you know. So um, and I'd just like to give a little uh, specific story here about, especially about the memoir, um, Roll of the Dice. So um, Linen Press is not about Asian writing. I mean, they publish, uh, they're women's writing, actually. It's more women's writing and um, a small press based in the UK. Um, and as I mentioned, my memoir is about an universal motherhood. It is about um, genetics and the skid. This is not an Asian topic. Skid is not something which affects only Asians. It affects, it can affect any race, basically. Um, and, uh, but what happened is once the book was published by the publisher, who I have to say never had an issue about whether this was written by an Asian writer or whether it is written by anybody. I think she just took the story. And this is something which, Indie presses do very well because they are, I would say, really open-minded. They're not as commercial. She took the story. Um, it was only when it was published, we realized, the publisher and myself, we both realized what we were up against because, interestingly, what happened is an Asian journal refused to review it, saying that this is not an Asian story. They said, it's, just, it's not about race or anything. It's about motherhood. It's not Asian. And never mind that the author is Asian. Um, Similarly, a journalist friend of mine was trying to get a um, story out in The Guardian about it. And the editor from uh, the editor she was in touch with, he mentioned that um, actually we already have a story about motherhood. So we don't want to take this. And her question was, you might have a story of motherhood. Do you have a story about an Asian mother, for example, or this specific topic? But no, they didn't see it like that. So what happens there is a story like that. I mean, where do, which community does it belong to then? You know, if it is not in the BAME community because you're expecting everything BAME to be about maybe race or, um, you know, and the publisher, we had a really funny blog which she wrote, which said that Mona, you should have put a cow in the story. Because had you put a cow, you didn't have a cow in your story. So that's the reason why it doesn't fit anywhere now. So that's, that's what I think the publishing, and it's not so much publishing as even the, 
the whole community, I think. It's not the, the gatekeepers also tend to be editors, reviewers, and readers. I mean, you mentioned about the white middle class. I mean, funnily enough, a lot of my writers, writers are actually, um, sorry, readers are actually women who are not Indian. I mean, so many of friends, and they've written back saying, we identified with the story because it's a very universal sort of story. It didn't have to be, I know, just because it's written by an Asian writer, we're not going to read it. I don't think I ever faced that from actual real readers. But unfortunately, the industry around somehow seems to think that there will not be a um, market. So we really need people to be, you know, taking more risks, to be seeing that we can actually take up uh, different kinds of stories without thinking of the race of the author. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Mona. And Shivani, how about you? Coming uh, back, to, have you had any sort of? Well, I mean, it's interesting. Yes. I want to touch upon what Mona said because this kind of ties into what I initially said about once the minute you start, you know, put, trying to put people in boxes, um, what happens to the stuff that doesn't neatly fit into a box? Mona's memoir, which I have read and highly recommend, um, mm -hmm. doesn't. It, it actually straddles many boxes, but because it straddles many boxes, it doesn't fall into any box, and so yeah. by virtue of that, it loses out. And this is this is why I'm so fundamentally opposed to. Um, you know, all these various sort of titles or, or you know, think defining attributes, because I feel in the long run, we actually lose out. To answer the question on, on the sort of the, you know, the sort of expectations from the publishing industry or the wider industry, um, perhaps I sound almost, um, you know, philosophical here, but I write fundamentally because I am a writer and fundamentally because I enjoy writing. The, the joy of writing, the joy of the creative process, the joy of walking around and getting an idea and then gestating that and having this character become a part of my life, even though it's not tangible. And me giving that character life is what really makes me write. It's what really fuels my passion to write. If someone wants to read that, that's a bonus. If someone wants to read it, does read it and enjoys it, well, that's gold dust. Um, and so perhaps if I'm, if from, from my perspective, therefore, if someone comes to me and says, well, you know, you are a, you know, you're a BAME writer and you should be writing about these topics. If I don't think I would, I personally would subscribe to that because again, to tie into what I said previously, I am the sum total of my experiences. My experiences are very unique to me. There's probably nobody else on this planet who has my experiences. Likewise, there's nobody else on the planet who has anybody else's experiences. So um, I have, of course, been asked several times. In fact, most of my the story, most of my stories that I've done very well in um, um, international competitions tend to have non-Indian characters, and I have been asked why that is the case. But those were just the characters that flew into my head. Those were the characters I enjoyed getting to know. Those were the characters I enjoyed creating, and those were the characters that it turns out that some amount of people enjoyed reading. Um, so I do feel again that. When you're looking at it from a commercial lens, when you're looking at it from a trying to fit something into a box lens, um, we're just never going to add up. We're, we're never going to come. It's, we're always going to come short. So for me personally, it it doesn't affect me because I come from it from a totally different sort of mindset. I I do somehow I do sometimes feel frustrated because I just feel that in trying to you know tick all these boxes, there's just so many of us that are falling through the cracks. But as an eternal optimist, um, I also feel that this is something that will evolve and change over time. Um, so just given the way, just given the way the world is going, just given the way people are more accepting, more aware, more, more curious, more intellectually interested in everything, in you know, what's not sort of their comfort zone. So personally, while this may be the situation now, um, I would urge all writers to stick to what they want to write, stick to what they want to create. And over time, we will see that shift where we don't have to stick to boxes and we can just be given the freedom to write what we want to write because there is an audience that wants to read the sort of stuff that we want to write. Yeah, no, I think I agree with you. I think there's reason for optimism. I think that there's definitely a wave and... Um, you know, with this whole sort of um, controversy, you know, this talk about Black Lives Matter, and also about entering, uh, you know, the, um, the dominant narrative, you know, I think uh, definitely as, um, uh, you know, BAME writers, or uh, we have actually 
more and more we'll be perceived as writers actually who are you know talking about universal uh, issues uh, and the fact that we are of a certain ethnicity is just you know just like a, a passport uh, you know a description on the passport so i don't know nadia what about you i mean you've again been published in bangladesh and have you had and here in britain have you had I think you know, we've we've already talked about the mm -hmm. the stereotyping that goes hand in hand with being a bme writer um, and it's, it's very difficult because like uh, Shibani said, you know, what you don't want to be doing is you don't want to have a sort of checklist and then you go tick, 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 you know, you've, you've written about this, you've put in this just to, um, I don't know, conform to a certain uh, sort of um, stereotype that, you know, goes around being a South Asian writer or a BME writer. And I do understand that agents and publishers, you know, obviously they want to make um, the writing marketable, but I feel that for myself, I don't want it to be to the extent where I my writing is compromised and that it either has to be sort of whitewashed or or on the other side exoticized, you know. And um, and uh, yeah, I write about like I said, I'm British Bangladeshi, so I I write about things that appeal to me and I want to put it out there. And uh, it's very difficult because uh, I've had a few issues. Well, I think one time I had a publisher and she read one of my short stories and she, um, she wrote back saying, yes, the character is female, but it could be written by anyone of any nationality. And um, I just thought, okay, so it was written in first person and it didn't require anything so it was quite difficult but to be honest in that case because it didn't change my story I did add maybe I think some jasmine flowers and something else but I can't quite remember for that one but um, but it didn't change my story but it, it did happen you know it's this whole you're South Asian why haven't you put something to identify your character as South Asian um, and then another time I had a story which actually featured a group of supremacists and which in itself, I guess, is controversial. But I was advised to rewrite my story because it was, they said, problematic. Um, and I was given a whole paragraph on how um, it wasn't believable uh, for fiction as fascism and neo-Nazism was a big thing in the US, but not in the UK. And uh, for me, it just felt, it felt apart from the fact it felt a little defensive because I was writing outside what should be my comfort zone, you know? And I did withdraw that story because I didn't feel like actually changing it. Um, so, uh, but it was one of those things that I think a lot of writers face that if you write beyond or outside what is expected of you, then you, you actually face these hurdles. And yeah. um, like I said, what I would really like is to be identified as a writer. And I think what we need is for more publishers to level the playing field mm -hmm. and give us the opportunity to tell our stories and let our writing actually speak for itself. You know, and I think that readers are far more discerning and open to new new things, you know, new topics, subjects, you know, than I think they're given credit for. Uh, and like you said, you know, it's actually the independent publishers that are um, are giving us the opportunity. I mean, I think they're they're taking a, a chance on uh, writers of color. I actually I feel like I should suddenly break out into an ABBA song, you know, take a chance on me. <laughs> I promise I won't. But um, also, I think what we need is we need more BAME uh, people within the within the publishing industry, you know, in the infrastructure, because I think currently it's it's only about what is it 13 percent? And that's just not enough. So I, I really think that what we need is we just need the publishing industry to open up and I think to be a little more accepting. Of, of BME writers, I think. No, I think I agree with you, Nadia. Yeah, definitely. I feel that, um, especially I think for emerging uh, voices of color, you know, I think it's very difficult to break in, you know, of course there are, there's a certain sort of rarefied field of writers already established, you know, the Rushdies, the Hari Punzurus, the Zadie Smiths of the world, you know, I mean, they're sort of, you know, up there. 
But then, you know, there's this sort of huge chasm. And then, you know, you find that we are all of us sort of are clamoring that please open the door, you know, let us in. And of course, that was part of the reason that, you know, the whole Kahani, you know, we, co uh, you know, I, along with co uh, Kavita Jindal, you know, I co-founded um, the, it's nearly 10 years now. Can you believe it? It's, uh, you know, it was established in 2011. And of course, you know, here we are sort of questioning this whole label, you know, this desirability of having a label of being known as BAME. But uh, uh, actually we are members of, you know, that's our calling card. The whole Kahani is a collective of, uh, you know, British South Asian writers. But I think that in our intention, you know, when we founded it was to say, not to say that, oh, please give us, you know, uh, you know, some special privileges. No, it was to say that, look, we are a group of South Asian British writers, but that doesn't define us and that doesn't limit us, you know. I mean, look at the variety of voices we bring to the table. Look at the different influences that have shaped yeah. different styles we, you know, write in. Uh, you know, I mean, in the collective, you know, we've got a writer from Malaysia, we've got, uh, well, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and within India, we have so many regional uh, variations, you know, Orissa, Punjab, Bombay, Kolkata, you name it, you know. So, you know, there's a whole sort of um, microcosm there, you know, a whole ecosystem of different voices, different writing styles. And uh, and what uh, I was w wondering, you know, did, do you find as, you know, members of this collective, has it uh, hindered or helped your growth as a writer? Let me begin with you, Shivani. Do you feel it's helped you? Well, being writing is perhaps one of the most solitary um, endeavors. So from my perspective, having a community, having a, a sort of a, a group with whom I can share my experiences, a group that supports me, a group that understands my need to constantly check out and, and, and lose myself in the, in, in the strange worlds that I tend to conjure is wonderful because that's something unless, I'm not, non-writers understand that writers need to be solitary, but really understanding what that solitariness is, is something that only a, a fellow writer can understand. So at a micro level, at a macro level, have, being a part of a, the collective has been hugely rewarding. It's um, over, oh, I haven't been a member for 10 years. I've been a member, I think for five or six years. And not mm -hmm. only have I found, you know, it to be an incredibly supportive, nurturing group. I've also made some very close personal friends out of it, which is an added bonus. Um, but to answer the question about whether it's the South Asian-ness of the, collect the collective that has um, improved my writing or not, certainly not. Um, also, I will I will say that I joined the collective. I was aware that everyone was South Asian, but I joined them more because I was aware that they were fantastic writers, and that me personally would benefit and grow being supported, being peer mentored by this wonderful set of people, <laughs> all fantastically established um, um, writers, um, and then of course that. That day we had some sort of similar experiences, certainly was the sort of cherry in the top. Um, I certainly find that we don't, we, of course, we don't always agree. We don't, uh, we, we, we critically appraise each other's stories. We sometimes tell, our, tell each other straight up if uh, our stories don't make sense, um, certainly many times in my case. But um, what I have found is it is nice to be um, part of a group that really understands my journey as a writer, but also my journey as an individual. Um, certainly having the South Asian flavor helps in that they understand some of the issues that are very pertinent or very personal to someone who comes from in, you know, the subcontinent. Um, but in as much as my writing per se, that has grown and benefited mainly because I'm in, in the company of such wonderfully fantastic, such esteemed writers that they happen to be South Asian is, like I said, an, an, an added bonus. Um, so if I were to go back in time, um, you know, six years ago and say, right, you know, I'm a, I, I put myself in the BME box. I don't think I would have chosen the whole Kahani because it's BME. I would have just chosen it because it gave me a platform to really um, enhance and get close to, very slightly closer to mastering my art. Thank you, Shivani. I think um, I think time's running out. So uh, should we just look at some of the questions? Uh, probably in the chat room, um, if there are any questions. Um, 
Thank you, Jana. Would you yeah, like? Sure, I can read those out for you. Yeah. Bear with me a moment. So we have one question from uh, Sarah Jane Potter, who asks, um, "Was the label first used? The label Bain is uh, first used in publishing to identify and reach the underrepresented groups in order to create schemes to increase diversity. I'm not sure when it started." Perhaps at this starting point, it was useful, but now can be done away with. What do you think? Yeah, I think, you know, it's like, a, uh, it's like anything that evolves, you know, it's like an evolutionary thing, you know, probably when it started, you know, it served a purpose. But I think what we were all saying was that uh, it's outlived its usefulness in a way, you know, and that we are much more aware and sophisticated as an audience of readers and writers now not to have this sort of hand-holding maybe to the same extent as we did in the past, you know. So I don't know, I hope that um, answers uh, your question. Yeah. yeah, great. Would anybody else like to add anything to that? Yeah, would uh, anybody else like to add anything? Nadia? I think you've said it, you know. Yeah. Yes. I mean, when it was created, mm -hmm. um, it served a purpose, but yeah. I think that you know we've as we said we've evolved and we've moved beyond that i think now it's time to actually maybe do away with with uh, with the term to be honest yeah i don't know where i would say to whether we should do away with the term or we just need to make the term more nuanced because i still strongly believe that there has to be a gaze towards this it's just like women working i mean i work in a technology sector um and i think organizations now are really trying to drive down the fact that we need more women and more diversity in management. And it's the same thing. You need more diversity in this whole publishing world. And um, you can't have such a large spectrum as an other to a mainstream. So I feel there has to be a gaze that there has to be, you have to sort of see how you look at the, you widen your gaze, but uh, I wouldn't say, and make the term more nuanced is I think what I'm trying to say. Well, as for me, I, 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 I personally would want to do away with the term altogether. I, I really dislike the fact that we want to celebrate differences when we can spend a lot more productive time talking about what draws us together, which speaking from, from writers globally, it is really the, the desire and the joy and the love of actually putting pen to paper and creating these marvelously fantastic worlds um, for our characters to live in and then to to have the, the honor and privilege to share those characters with, uh, with potential readers. So as far as I'm concerned, I think the, the term has totally outlived its, um, outlived its use. Um, we, let's do away with boxes. Let's do away with all of these things and just celebrate individuality um, uh, in the way that it should be. Yeah. We have um, a second question, which I know we may have actually already answered during the discussion. Um, this is from somebody who answered, who um, arrived, sorry, uh, slightly late to the session. Um, sorry, I'm just gonna mute for a moment, Rush Mav, because I think uh, there's a bit oh. of feedback coming from your computer. Yes. There we go. Um, so uh, Ali Arif asks, um, I joined this late, so I don't know if you talked about it already. Have you talked about how BAME as a term erases different lived experiences in these groups? I think, yes, that is something that you've already covered. I wonder if you could give a quick summary for anyone who joined late. Um, so what was a quick summary of, um, yeah, I think basically, um, our sort of uh, the general sort of gist of that conversation that we were having was that um, uh, what BAME does, it's a very overarching umbrella term, you know, and it uh, sort of denies us our own individual experience, you know, identity. And um, that we all have, you know, while we might, you know, broadly look the same or come from the same sort of, you know, area of the world, that doesn't mean that, you know, um, we can all be put under the same category and um, or be reduced. Uh, very reductive, I think that was the thing, you know, so uh, what we were all sort of saying is that, you know, you know, of course, appreciate our sort of Asian-ness, whatever, but, you know, but know also that, you know, it's not just that, you know, we are more than some of our ethnicity, you know, we are, we, we are writers first and where we choose to draw upon, you know, our inspiration or, you know, our uh, ideas or themes can come from anywhere in the world, you know, and we should not be expected to just refer to that's one little, you know, uh, you know, pot, so to speak, you know, to dip up in. 
uh, uh, you know, pen into that particular inkwell again and again. So I don't know. I think that was probably just, I don't know if anybody else would want to add to that. Or... Yeah, I think we covered all of that. And yeah. I know um, yeah. Shivani mentioned the other time yeah. about whether if you belong to too many places, do you not belong anywhere? Mm. And I have a poem as well in our last anthology, which is about intersection yeah. intersectionalities and about too many different identities and how they overlap and where you belong. So we are unique. And what happens though is when you are completely unique and alone, then it is even harder to get heard. And my problem about the term, I mean, I yeah, personally, I don't like the term. I don't like BAME and you know, it's, I know we've always been joking. It's a lame term, we know that. However, how do you get hurt if you don't belong or you're not part of a community? And I think that's where classification brings in its own limitation of structure, but it also places you somewhere. And I think that's what the industry needs to be thinking about that, you know, how do you, you can't just put this huge big spectrum in one, uh, like I said, you know, from mm. Rashti to Ishiguro to everybody in between in one category. But unfortunately there's no category, then how do you get hurt? So I think that's what my personal question would be. Well, I'm afraid we have completely run out of time now, but thank you all for sitting. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today. And thank you so much for uh, the Stay at Home Literary Festival for, you know, uh, inviting us. And here are the two uh, anthologies. So do feel free to get to know the whole Kahani. You won't be disappointed. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very thank much. you. Thanks, everyone. Thank